On August 21st, 1986, more than 1,700 people and some 3,500 livestock were found dead next to Lake Neos in Cameroon. Any living thing within a 25 kilometer radius of the lake was killed, and the mysterious incident brought with it many tales and folklore. Some said an evil spirit had emerged and taken the lives of all those who lived near the lake. That was until scientists discovered that the deaths were related to carbon dioxide poisoning. Lake Neos was formed in a volcanic crater and became a high pressure storage unit of carbon dioxide beneath the water. The carbon dioxide eventually became so pressurized that it exploded, creating a burst of water into the air and causing what's scientifically known as a limnic eruption. A limnic eruption takes place when dissolved carbon dioxide suddenly erupts from beneath deep lake waters and forms an intense gas release in the form of a cloud. And because carbon dioxide is heavier than air when released in large volumes, it hugs the ground spreading quickly and will suffocate all life it covers. One man who survived the incident explained it like this. I could not speak. I became unconscious. I could not open my mouth because then I smelled something terrible. I heard my daughter snoring in a terrible way, very abnormally. When crossing to my daughter's bed, I collapsed and fell. I wanted to speak. My breath would not come out. My daughter was already dead. After the tragic event, a large polyethylene pipe that runs to the bottom of the lake was installed, allowing gas to escape as the waters from the bottom of the lake are siphoned to the top. But Lake Neos is not the only such lake. This is Lake Kivu. It's located between the Democratic Republic of Congo and Rwanda, and is over 1,500 times larger than Lake Neos. The lake is a tourist attraction, but it's also a ticking time bomb due to both carbon dioxide and methane gas built up underneath. And experts say it could threaten millions living in the region. Engineers built a floating gas plant on the lake to monitor the situation and release the natural gases to produce electricity. It covers 30% of Rwanda's electricity needs. But researchers are in disagreement over which gas extraction method is correct and are concerned about whether such efforts might disturb the lake and actually cause more danger instead of overcoming it. 